Splendor is all about collecting gems and using them to buy cards. Cards then act like bonus gems, so you can buy more and more expensive cards, which are worth points. When someone reaches 15 points, the game ends. To set up the game, shuffle the three decks of cards and lay out four from each deck face up in the middle of the table. These face up cards are the marketplace that you can buy cards from. Then set out the supply of gem tokens. For a four player game, you'll use the full set. With three players though, leave out two of each color, or with two players, remove three of each color. I'm demonstrating with a two player game, so that's what I'll do. And those removed gems go back into the box. These gold tokens are special, and you'll always use the full set of these. The last thing to set up are these tiles called nobles. Randomly pull out one per player plus one extra, and leave the rest in the box. So for a two player game, I'd set out three nobles, and now you're ready to play. The youngest player goes first, and at each turn you just choose one action. You can either collect gems, buy a card, or reserve a card for later. Most turns are spent collecting gems. You can either take three different colors, or two of the same color. But you can only take two of the same if there were at least four available. You also can't take gold tokens on a normal turn. I'll show how you get those later. If you end up with more than 10 tokens in your collection, you'll need to put some back. So for example, if the supply looked like this on your turn, these green tokens are all gone, so you can't get any of those. But you could take two brown, since that supply has four available. Or you could take three tokens in different colors, like a red, brown, and white. Now you have 11 tokens, so you'd have to put one back. If you already have the gems that you need, then instead you can spend your turn buying a card. The cost to buy each card is on the bottom. So you could buy this one by paying one white, two green, and two red back to the supply. Then reveal the next card from the deck, so there's always four available in each row. Put your cards face up by your collection of gems. You can stack matching colors together to save space, but keep the top section of each card visible. That shows how the card benefits you. Each card has a gem on it, which acts as a permanent gem in your collection. You can think of that as a discount on all future purchases. So now that you have two blue cards, you could buy this on a future turn with just one blue token, or buy this with just the white, green, and brown, and no blue at all. More expensive cards are also worth points, and collecting those points is how you win the game. The last way that you can spend your turn is to reserve a card. That means you take a card from the market, or take blindly from the top of a deck, without paying any cost for it, and then keep it saved in your hand. You can also put your reserve cards face down on the table, since you don't need to look at them all the time. Whenever you reserve a card, you also get to take a gold token, which is wild. So this can be used in the place of any type of gem. And reserving a card is the only way to get gold. Once you have a card reserved in your hand, you can use a future turn to pay the cost and buy it, just like if you bought that card from the market. The main limit on reserving is that you can only have three cards in your hand at a time, and there's no way to unreserve a card except for buying it. So if you already have three cards reserved, you can't choose to do that for your turn. And if the stack of gold tokens runs out, you are still allowed to reserve cards, but you just won't get a token when you do. A few clarifications. Gold tokens do count towards your 10 token limit, so you might have to discard something if you take a gold as your 11th token. And gold can be spent as any color gem to buy any card. It doesn't have to go toward the card that you reserved. You don't even have to buy your reserve cards at all, but if they're still in your hand at the end of the game, then they aren't worth any points. The last thing to talk about are these noble tiles. Each one of these serves as bonus points for collecting a set of matching cards. When you've bought the number of cards shown on one of these tiles, you automatically receive that noble, which is worth three points. And each noble can only be taken by one player, so if multiple people are collecting the same colors, whoever reaches a goal first will get the tile. So for example, if you buy this card by spending two blues and a wild to make seven, and one green to make three, this is your third green card, and you already have three red and more than three blue, so you'd immediately earn this noble. You don't have to spend a turn collecting this, it just happens automatically when you've bought enough cards. 
So you earned eight points that turn, which puts you at a total of 16, and that will trigger the end of the game. Remember, this game ends whenever someone hits at least 15 points, but you keep playing around the table until everyone has had the same number of turns. So if you went first in this two-player example, I would still get one last turn. But if I went first, then the moment you hit 15 points, the game ends right away. Once that last round is done, whoever has the most points wins, and ties go to whoever bought the fewest cards. This game often comes down to one or two turns where everyone is really close to winning, but one person does slightly better and gets there first. Play hard and have fun. This game has a bunch of available expansions, so let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video covering some of those. And I'll see you next game night.